guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be reading another few chapters of The Midnight Gang by David Walliams. Now before we get started, I just wanted to tell you guys that David Walliams wrote a new book called Slime and the blurb is, to say Ned was just an ordinary boy would be wrong. He wasn't ordinary, he was extraordinary. Now if you want to know more about this extraordinary boy i want to make sure you hit that big thumbs up button and subscribe so you can stay tuned until i read this book now let's get started so we're going to be starting from chapter 30 an old friend meanwhile team two or george as he was known was busy working through his floors the boy was crawling around the wards on his hands and knees. George, al George already had quite a haul of balloons that he had borrowed from the patients, all said get well soon on them, and had probably been given by a loved one. However, George was too excited to feel any guilt. With every balloon, he was getting closer to his dream of flight. The tricky part was holding on to the bunch of balloons while untying others Soon George had large bunches of balloons tied both arms and both legs, yet still needed more and more. Just as he was crawling out of the final ward on the 29th floor of the voice called out, George! The boy would know that voice anywhere. It was the voice of his local newsagent. Raj? Yes, it's me, Raj. George? My favourite customer. Did you receive the tins of chocolate I sent you? Yes, thanks, a bundle. I was worried about you when I heard you had to have your tonsils out. I am feeling much weller now. Thanks, Raj. Those chockies have already cheered me up. The newsagent smiled. Good, 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 and again, good. They were the absolute best tins of chocolate in my shop left over from a few Christmases ago, only a few years out of date. Still, it was nice for you to, it's, it was nice of you, mate. Come back soon, George. Taking, takings are down since you have been coming in. I will, replied the boy with a chuckle. What are you doing here in the hospital? The news agent was sitting up in his bed in his pyjamas with his fingers bandaged. Two nights ago I was involved in a very serious stapler accident. I was in my shop stapling some prices to products. I had some very special offers on. 100 pencils for the price of only 99. Of 99. Buy a ton of toffees, get one toffee absolutely free. Second hand birthday cards with the names tipped X'd out half price and somehow I managed to staple my fingers together. Ouch, replied Top George. That sounds well painful. It was, said Raj mournfully. I would not advise stapling your own fingers together to anyone. I remember that, mate. Well, I would love to stay, but I have um have a natter matter but George was just beginning to scuttle out when Raj called him back. George? Yeah, mate? What are you doing with all those balloons? Uh, uh, George spluttered. They are, they are my balloons, ain't they? Really? Yeah, all of them. Yeah, mate. The newsagent did not look at all convinced. That one guy said, get well soon, ma'am. He said, I think was a mis mix up with the balloon shop mm, replied Raj unconvinced but what are all the balloons doing down here the children's ward is on the very top floor of the hospital George thought for a moment they floated down didn't they he replied but these balloons only float up well well I can't say nattering all night said George turning to go oh my favorite customer Please would you do your favourite news agent a favour? He asked. Sorry mate, I gotta go. It will only take a moment of your time. Thank you kindly. George, my favourite customer. What is it then? 
sighed the boy. Well, the food in this hospital has been shocking. This very nice lady called Tootsie comes around with her trolley, promising she has everything on it. You know, you ask for something, then it turns out she only got a cheese triangle and a sachet of brown sauce. Yeah, I know. You and I, you and I love our grub. We certainly do, said Raj, slapping his tummy. So as, so as a thank you for the chocolates, please could you get your favourite news agent a takeaway? I would call for one myself, for since a stapling incident, I can't use my fingers. With that, Raj displayed his bandaged fingers. Can I come later, back later, mate? I worry I may have wasted away by then, he said, sapping his large round tummy again, which looked big enough to fit a beach ball inside. So please, can you take my order now? I will need to write it down. No, 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 it's just a couple of things. It will be easy to remember. Okay, replied the boy, off you go. Thank you, so I would like an onion, fahi, samosa, chicken jaffrezi, aloo chat, tandoori, king prawn masala, poppadoms. You are doing me nut in. I can't remember all that, interrupted the boy. However, Raj's eyes were glowing with his mouth watering at the thought of this delicious food. No, 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 you'll be able to remember it. Just a couple more vegetable balti, peshwari naan, chapati, aloo gobi, matar paneer, tarka dal. I need a pen and paper, said George, panicking. Poppadoms? You said poppadoms already, mate. Yes, I know. I want two portions of poppadoms. Mango chutney, paneer masala, palau rice, Barter, Chana, Alu, Lamp, Rogan, Josh. I think that's all. Did I say Papa Doms? Yeah, twice. Good. You can never have enough Papa Doms. In fact, make that three portions of Papa Doms. Right now, just recite receipt me back to me. When George finally escaped from Raj's ward, he realised the best plan was just to order every single item on the ne menu of the nearest Indian restaurant, plus to ask for four portions of poppadoms in case three didn't turn out quite enough. Now out in the corridor, George called the lift to take him down to the ground floor where he would meet the rest of the gang at the bottom of the impossibly tall stairwell. Ping! The lift doors opened. Inside was an old chain smoking cleaner who the midnight gang had met only last night. Dilly was holding onto the handle of the floor, polishing the sheet, and as always had a burned cigarette stuck to her bottom lip. Her mouth opened at the shock of seeing George with a hundred balloons tied onto his arms and legs. The boy had so many, he was actually beginning to feel a little lighter. George's head was just visible, nestling between the balloons. What are you up to now? she demanded. A trail of ashes fell from her cigarette to the floor. Oh, hello again, replied George brightly. The cleanliness inspection last night was all tickety-boo, so keep up the great work. Although we did find some cigarette ash on the floor, we weren't sure if that was you. What are you doing with all these blasted balloons? asked Dilly. I got a good mind to pop them. All with me flag. The floated down excuse hadn't worked that well on Raj, so George tried another explanation. I am just delivering all these to incredibly popular patient. He actually gets sent thousands of blooms daily. So don't worry, I'll get the next lift. Ping! The door slipped shut on her. George stamped the floor in frustration. He had been seen by a member of hospital staff out of bed in the middle of the night. The midnight gang would now have to move as fast if George was to realise his dream. Chapter 31 The World's Oldest Chart Meanwhile, a few floors below, Team 3 was sweeping through the wards of sleeping patients on the lookout for balloons. Tom was in the, and the porter were both found at hard work. 
crawling along the floor on their hands and knees, trying not to be seen. What made it even more difficult is that they both had dozens of balloons tied to them. It was way past midnight and now all that they could do would be heard, snoring of the patients, many of them old. The nurses weren't at their stations, but with nothing much for them to do in the middle of the night. Some had dozed off while the others were reading books, just as Tom and the porter were crawling out of the big swing doors at the end of the ward, they heard an old lady call after them. Oh, my, what beautiful balloons. Are they for me? Shh. Tom looked at the porter who put his finger up to his lips to sniggle, signal to be as quiet as possible. I said, are they for me? I do love balloons. The voice was louder this time. It couldn't be ignored. There was a chance the nurses who were napping at their station just a few paces away would wake up if the old lady said another word. Tom looked up. An impossibly elderly woman was sitting up in her bed. Her face was wrinkled and her hair was white as snow. Unlike most other patients, she didn't have any cards or flowers by her bed. Her table was completely bare, aside from a jug of water and a plastic cup. Come on, said Tom. To the porter in the room. The boy wanted to press on, but the porter looked torn. The man shook his head. Mr. Tom, sir, you can't just ignore her. I have never seen such beautiful balloons in my days. I love them, said the old lady. Who sent who sent me them to me? It was it father? The lady looked in her nineties, maybe even older. It was as if she had shrunk had shrunk her like a piece of fruit left out in the sun tom realized it wasn't just the old lady's body that had weakened her mind must have done too if she thought her father was still alive it was impossible tom was completely lost at what to say or do as he rose the balloons bouncing around him he whispered to the porter her father can't still be alive surely no, of course not, whispered back the porter. Nellie is 99 and has no family left alive. What shall we do about the balloons? asked Tom. Nellie thinks she is still a little girl, so we must play along. Let me. The porter turned to the old lady. Yes, Nellie, your father sent me this. He handed the old lady the balloon that was closest to her. This was one he had swiped from several beds earlier. It was a little deflated and had a love you granddad written on it. Not that Nellie seemed to mind. Her face lit up and she held the string. <clears throat> oh, I love this one. It's absolutely beautiful. She cooed. And you are beautiful for delivering it to me. Tom looked up to the porter. The boy imagined the man had never been called beautiful before. Did father have a message for me when he might be picking me up? As the porter was lost for words, Tom stepped in. Soon, Nellie, the boy said. You'll be seeing him very soon. Really? Yes, really, replied Tom. Oh, goody, goody. The old lady smiled and years melted away. It was as if she was really a little girl again. We have to go, said Tom. Are you delivering balloons to other children like me in the hospital today? She asked. Yes, said Tom, his voice cracking with emotion. That's exactly what we are doing. Splendid, she replied. You have so many. Be careful you don't take off. Ha ha. Tom t said to the porter, shared, shared a look. She was one step ahead of him. We must go, said the porter. Do come back and see me again soon said the lady, her eyes marvelling at the new toy. The pair scurried out through the double doors and the clowns of balloons followed their way. Chapter 32 Balloon Burglars Okay guys, so that's it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a very good night's sleep and hopefully you will be excited for the next day tomorrow. Bye.